Hello, everyone. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, as Shane introduced me, I am uh, I am Kyung Hee Kim, and I'm working for over 17 years for Funsus Compliance at as Electronics. So I am very a little famous in Korea, but <laughs> maybe everyone here uh, don't know me. Yeah. Have you ever heard about Forstrike before Shane and Helio introduced? Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Forstrike is uh, now very famous in Korea, but uh, globally it's not famous. So it's the good opportunity to introduce you guys about Forstrike. And um, there is a sewing game is uh, my colleague and she will introduce uh, Postrate demo after me. And we are not sisters, but there are too many games in Korea, so you think we are uh, sisters. Just a colleague. Yes. Um, Postrate is really, really a good tool so for open source compliance, I explain about Postrate briefly. Today, I would like to uh, talk about Postrate open source project. The presentation is divided into three parts. Uh, first, I will introduce and explain what Postrate is. And then we move on the automate how we can automate uh, compliance using Postrite. And last, I explain the how we can automate security uh, using Postrite and conclude the, this presentation. This is the, um, this is the Aegis open source policy and process. It's over, over 15 years. And as it has been establishing open source policy and process based on Linux Foundation's guidelines. So, but there is no suitable tool 15 years ago, so we made it. And we needed the, a tool like uh, Red Star Shows. So, as it developed its own tool in 2014 and has been continuously upgraded it every year because the process is changed and improved. And in 2021, we open sourced this tool as Forthrite with the intention of contributing to open source compliance industry and making it easier for other companies to automate their processes like AG. And Forthright is named to signify becoming a light for open source compliance, free open source software and light. If you have any questions about Forthright, please visit Forthright.org. You will find a wealth of uh, information on the topic. And you can visit the demo site using the site. And there are many, many documents. And you can find the YouTube content of uh, Postrite. Postrite YouTube content is better than my presentation. And Postrite is cons consists of a scanner and hub. Postrite scanner is a tool that scans dependencies, source code, and binaries. While Postrite Hub is a system that manages everything related to open source. We automated the open source compliance process in the hub using scanning the result, OSS open source BOM, open source bill of materials, and after, after using Forthright Hub, we are making the open source software notice and package. I explain this uh, next slide. And Forthright Hub is uh, manages all about open source, license management, open source management, and vulnerability management. As Helio explained that if we started open source compliance, but we can manage the security vulnerabilities also. 
also and compliance process management and supply chain management is necessary so we use the supply chain management using Foslight Hub. Last one is expo management. Foslight Hub has many functions such as expo management. For example, we can compare to software BOM using project version 1 and project version 2. And Foslight Scanner is consist of a pre-check and dependency checker and source code checker and binary checker. And we are using the many open source tools such as pre-checker uses reuse and source scanner uses named scan code and scan OSS open source. And dependency scanner uses a lot of dependency package manager open source. And LG has a lot of specific platforms such as Android and Yocto platform. So we make a platform specific scanner, Postlight scanner. So we are open or Postlight scanner. It's the Python package and you can use it anytime. Postlight Hub is a kind of web service to provide open source compliance. We believe that Postlight Hub is an essential tool uh, for open chain component program. We get the open chain components program thanks to Postlight Hub, such as red lines, can, we can achieve the open chain spec. So I think it is very good to use, very good to, for your open chain components. Now it's the compliance automation. Yeah, this is the uh, we follow the four-step process based on Linux Foundation's guideline to ensure compliance with the open source license obligation when developing software. First time is the uh, identification stage. The development team analyzes the open source component using, used in the software. For example, for straight scanner or other scanners, other open source scanners or commercial scanners, anything is good. We use a full thread scanner and uh, after that, after, ident after analyzing the open source component, we can get the OSS BOM, open source, open source software bit of, com bit of materials, and it, it, it is reported, uh, full thread report type. In the approval stage, the open source list is sent to OSP, Open Source Program Office, like us, for review and confirmation of the correct license and associated obligations. And this result is an open source BOM again. And in the notice, step three, in the notice and verification, and the development team create an open source package and by gathering the source code that needed to be disclosed uh, based on license obligation. After verifying that the package has been uh, created properly, we reviewed this one and the OSPOR generated the open source notice. Finally, in the distribution stage, we the open source package and notice generated by us, OSP, OSP, are distributed to the designated site, for example, uh, opensource.ag.com. That's done. And this allows customers to view to the open source component used at opensource.ag.com. This is the process of open source compliance and we are automated to the using Postlight Scanner and Postlight Hub. And here are some ways to automate compliance with uh, developers. We are using Jenkins and Postlight PreChecker. Here are some ways so to automate compliance with the copyright and license attribution rules. I think the, the most important thing is that for developer, developers to check open source component and license by themselves, not OSPO, not other compliance managers. So 
Developers push the source code, and Jenkins is operated, and repository checker, post-rate pre-checker, lint mode means that post-rate pre-checker uh, checks the source code has the um, right information about copyright and license. So check the license and copyright writing rules, and if it's not compliant, and developers make up the source code, and again, same, and compliant OK is good. It's the Jenkins the example, but honestly, we are not the just the demo, so we didn't adapt yet. But our goal is to adapt this one to all, all source code repositories. And this is the, another example of uh, post scanner. I mean, after push the source code to repository and Jenkins is operated and open source BOMs are generally uh, automated, generated. And mailing the BOM compared to the post scanner before and after and reporting to developer and mailing it. Yes, yeah. And security automation is, uh, I explained this one. Lastly, let me briefly explain the method of uh, automating vulnerability management using Postrite. Based on the open source BOM, we have uh, analyzed Postrite can automatically send an email like this when new vulnerabilities are discovered in the existing project. I mean, vulnerability is changing every day. So we completed the, the one open source the project developed and one day the vulnerability is now come and you can develop can the mail, can receive this mail by new vulnerabilities coming. And we can adopt this one Jenkins also, similarly to compliance automation Vulnerability management can also be automated using Jenkins like this. Postrate scanner and Postrate hub API. Actually, Postrate hub provided REST APIs, so we when push the repository check and we use the Postrate hub API, we can the vulnerability information also. Yes, and as I explained everything about Postrite Hub, but it's the summary of the features provided by Postrite Hub. In addition to open source and license management and compliance management, vulnerability management. And you can see the supply chain management. Actually, we are using this function. Uh, supply chain management means that if we get the software from other third party software, third party company, and we can uh, get the open source list and we register the Postgres hub and we can their open source bombs and open source vulnerabilities as well. Yeah, that's my end of my presentation and we show the uh, Postgres demo. Uh, uh, hi, <laughs> my name is Soim, and I will show a quick and simple demo using Foslight. Uh, first, I created a project in, in advance, and let's see the identification tab. 
We can enter open source information and in identification tab, and I entered open source information on which will include it in my software. And um, you can also upload a scanner result in uh, SPDX format is okay. And uh, if you use Foslight scanner, you can upload Foslight scanner result uh, in Foslight hub. And you can enter the open, open source information by third party or source or binary. And if you go to BOM tab, you can see the, all the open source information from another tabs. And you can check the license obligation and also you can check the restriction. If you click our icon, you can check which, which restriction exists in this license. And also you can check the vulnerability of the open source. If you click vulnerability icon, you can see the CVE IDs of that open source. And you can also click the CVE ID. You can check the vulnerability information more details. And let's see the, let's move on next step. Uh, if you entered all the open source information in identification tab, you can check the open source list to be uh, to uh, obligated the, to disclose source code. And after check the list, uh, I uploaded the source code for disclosing. And then let's move to notice tab. You can issue the notice for license to licenses are obligated to notify. If you click pre preview button, you can see default HTML format of notice. There are open source information and it includes license text also. And you can select the report uh, notice type various formats like SPDX or uh, HTML or text. Yeah. Yes, of course. Uh, you don't have to do anything else for making the notice. And but if you want to um, hide hide the open source version, you can check those those things. You can you can modify it on the system too. And let's move final step distribution. Uh, this step is not released to open source version yet, uh, but uh, because, uh, oh, yes, uh, you can upload uh, issued notice and source code to public site uh, so that users can download those files. Uh, in case of Edge, we upload those files to open source edge.com. Uh, in this case, if you go to open source edge.com, you can see the pro notice of those models like this. And uh, customer can download those files. And so far, we uh, I showed the uh, main, how to manage open source compliance process and vulnerabilities on Foslight Hub. And also you can check vulnerability information in another separately vulnerability list and you can just type uh, open source name and you can so search vulnerability information in here too. And and that's all I prepared for today. Thank you.
yes, and it, so it's, it, it takes too long time to open this tool. I mean, we made it since 2014 and seven years ago and we open source. So it, it did take a while. Yes, yes, I think so. a section there where it can, and you said it's not open source yet, but this tool can auto-publish your source code as well. Will that source code publishing thing become open source? You mean the distribution page? I think it, it is a little hard because many companies are using the other, their own distribution site. So, we have to, we, we can provide the public API, but companies are organizing the different sites. So it is a really difficult to open the distribution right. station. Yeah, yeah, yes. Again, I suppose people could create their own plugin. Yes, right, yeah. And also Postgres Hub is integrated to other commercial tools such as PostID and Black yeah. their scanners can, uh, their their own report type, and they we we are open the REST API, so there are two commercial two companies using our APIs, and their result to integrated input Postgres Hub. Yes, so many commercial tools. If you using commercial tools, you can request uh, the commercial two companies to using Postgres Hub integration. Oh, yeah, actually, Lime, uh, Lime Plus in Korea uses uh, Postgres. I, I can right. tell. I, I don't know. I can <laughs> tell their information, and they requested the Postgres company, and they uh, made the plugin. Oh, that's yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kelly, I've got a question. Uh, yeah, this seems like a very different tooling approach to a lot of what we've seen in our tooling work coming out of Germany. Um, so, you know, tools like ORT are extremely flexible and powerful, but they seem to involve a lot of setup. This comes at it from a very different angle. It, it's the same angle I like just added to 16. So, because it's uh, basically it's the visual component that is. Not, this is not for developers. This is for different, uh, different kind of uh, uh, that is that is meant to compliance officers. This is information that they need. So we need to actually have some access to the data generated by tools like Skycore or Git and all that. But the visual part interface is the one that uses. Uh, actually, I I want to demo for you for developers and self check is the for developers and maybe you can create the self check you mean that the for developers just a moment Just input the you want to analyze for developers. If your source is uh, uploaded in GitHub or public repository, and just uh, click this one, and the uh, analysis result is uh, uploaded. For example, self check the other, it takes too much time, so I show the other, other result. Yeah, <laughs> scanning is, uh, it takes too much time to scan, so I can show the, the other side. Maybe demo site is... Uh... <laughs> That's quite an interesting challenge where an old version of um, SPDX was providing a challenge to some companies if it was an XML file. And the company told me they needed to spend 300 million lines. 
And after the analyzing this, developer can check the, this information and developer can check the OSS information like this one and obligations such as the notice obligation. I mean, it's, it's the function for developers, not OSPOS. So, yeah. You mean that? Right, but it does the analysis on attackers. Does it use an internal frostlight scanner or is it calling some special? It's the internal frostlight scanner. Okay. Yeah. And can you use a different scanner, like scan code if you want? Oh, yeah. Actually, frostlight scanner uses scan code and scan OSS. Okay. So it already integrated. Okay. Yes. You can integrate any other scanners to using this URL because we opened the or source code of Fosrate Hub, so integrate any any scanners. Actually, in Korea, Atri is adopting the other tool, not Fosrate scanner, just the other open source, not open source scanner, just the, the other commercial tool. Yes, government laboratories. Yes, not uh, not com um, common company research lab such as. Yeah, that's the that's all. all right. Yes. Thank you. Yes. 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 <laughs> Yes. Yeah, you mean that if you bypass our procedures, right? Yes. If you want to skip our procedures, you can using the self checklist also. Or uh, yes, it's not automated configuration yet. But many companies want to like you, so we are thinking of this. And when setting up this Postgres hub, we can check, we can configure, skip the each process, pro procedure. But it is not. It is not uh, this year's roadmap. <laughs> Sorry. Yes.
full business logic for when Kenya is in the room, and then as soon as she's gone, so I won't put suspicion. Yeah. <laughs> that question. Yes. <laughs> Oh, yeah, very good question and a little difficult question also. And actually, we we think we the scanning result is proper from development development team, but we can check the some. Actually, we can check the open source license exact exact or not. We just the uh, from download location. It's the, or similar to Helios' opinion uh, based on PURL. I mean, many scanners' results are false positive, as you know. So I think the snipping matching is not important to more the days go on. So dependency check is most important, I think. And actually, sometimes we check the false positive because we can get the result, the source tab, and there are source, source directory and open source component is quite different. We can check and we can ask the development team, is it the positive or post positive? Sometimes we ask, but sometimes we skip on. Yeah, so, so it is not 100% perfect, I think, yeah. Yes. You mean that development team input the hundred of URLs and how we can analyze this one? Yes, but it's that it's a very good question. It's our secret. <laughs> Actually, the development uh, after we run the dependency check, it's it's almost uh, cases. I mean, first of all, before dependency check, we have only more 10 or 20 components. And after dependency check, we can want over 100 component URLs. So actually, we have the automatic analysis program. It doesn't open yet. We only use internally, and actually we are using the OIT. I mean, uh, URL is input, and automate, automated uh, analysis is uh, coming. So they, I can show you. It's it's a secret. Is it recorded? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I believe you don't distribute the. Contest? Yes, yes. Actually, it is. Actually. So it's, it's interesting that the, the current public process is quite manual. Yes. There is a facility currently not open which allows batch. Yes, yes. For example, is the auto analysis. I mean, that there are too many URLs. So if you use auto analysis, and analysis result is uh, coming out. I mean, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh -huh. So 
we we can using this auto automatic analysis so we our we save our time Yes. It is the result of automatic analysis, and we use the OIT and scan code. Only scan code? Yes, yeah, sorry. It's not OIT, just the scan code. And scan code result that license text is MIT and MIT, and copyright for top three. So we can register the, this open source by automatically. But it's not open source yet. Yes. But it, I mean, isn't, that goes back to the point Mark brought up that an interim solution could be applied to package the URLs and feed them in. I'm sure you would be able to actually take the idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're talking about the automation of the video, the way they do the video. Can you go in the main page or something like audio when you're doing that? Right. Do you actually have the components for every audio? Just one single thing. I suppose Gary touched on a tiny part of that. And Gary, you flagged that nowadays there can be emergence of um, transpositions between S bombs. So that a company might use an S bomb to ingest something completely different. It doesn't matter. They don't even notice it. And then they can export into another format. Again, they don't notice it, I'm sure. Right, right. Well, one of the things we Yeah, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Big hand. For yes, bye-bye.